Yes, it is I. Welcome back to Chunchcast number six. It's been quite a while since I've done one of these. A lot of changes have happened. A lot of things have changed. But here we are. We've got a few things I want to talk about today. My privileges of getting a Nintendo Switch again. And Master Manhunter joining Justice League. And more Transformers, War for Cybertron, Earthrise stuff. Yeah, I've got a lot of notes here and dot points that I'm going to keep track of. So let's just get right into it and hook in, shall we? Oh, cool. Chant. Oh, yes, I'm Chant. <sighs> Okie before we get started, just touching on uh, bringing Chunkcast back. There's a few reasons why. I'm aiming to simplify things. I was trying to do this and I was really overcomplicating things. I wanted to do things that are out of budget or, you know, get equipment that I couldn't afford or uh, I was trying to cover over things and, you know, make it look like it was something that it wasn't. Uh, I tried doing an audio only one, but I, I, I didn't like that as much because I missed the uh, actual interaction um, and talking to people or, you know, to you through the camera and uh, people respond more to that as well. I, I know for myself when I watch podcasts or videos, um, I tend to respond more if it's an actual person presenting to me. Uh, so there's all that. And I was just scaling things back. I've been saying for a while now, I want to do this on a real shoestring budget. Using what I've already got. Um, I'm using my tablet that I got for free here. This is a $10 stand I got from Kmart. But I, I'm using a tablet here so I can keep track of my notes. Uh, and dot points that I got for free when I got my new phone a couple of years back. You know, just really, there's no point in buying something else for it. That's something I have on hand to use for it. I've had this microphone here for about eight years and it's still kicking on. You know, it's not perfect, but it is what it is. And I only got this a couple of years ago as well. And I've had this desk. It's a cheap ass desk, like 20 bucks. You know, and it's, you know, it's all right. It's pretty, pretty standard, solid. So yeah, I've just, I've had time away to think about it and what I want to do. And um, once I got out of my head of, you know, not really spending more money than I need to or want to. Like YouTube, it's changed. It's not the, it's not the same place it used to be. It's not a place we can kind of validate spending a lot of money on things to put something out there. And I'm over that. I'm over that now. I, I'm not kind of going for that anymore. This is just for me. Just for a bit of fun for a couple of hours during the week at some point when I've got things I want to talk about. If I can pick three things out of the week that I want to talk about, I'm going to do it. So that's pretty much why I'm back here. There's no point in spending thousands of dollars on a nice camera. Like that that webcam, that's a webcam Logitech C920 or something. I've had that for years and it's still, you know, it's all right. It'll do the job. And this this light here came in a pack of two for 50 bucks on eBay. I got it like, what, three, five years ago or something like that. And one of them still works. So I've got that there and that that's my lighting source. So what you see is what you get from now on. I'm not going to try and be anything else. It's just going to be me, a cup of coffee or something, a couple of topics to talk about, something that I want to show. You know, here we are once a week. Um, yeah, we're going to do it. And I'm going to try to cut out as many ums and ahs as possible. But the fun part is, is me, myself and I, and uh, we've got friends on social media that I've come across over the years, uh, like, you know, Brian at Sin Spaces. And then you've got uh, Lucas News, Greggio, Rem, and all that kind of stuff at Aussie Gamers Experience. You know, we, we talk a lot amongst ourselves and like, you know, then you got Top Loader, <laughs> Top Loader, <laughs> uh, on Twitter going off and, you know, you got Ash over in the UK, um, touch base with him now and then. Um, oh, there's, there's so many people that I could rattle off. Um, Stewie over in the UK as well. He's super nice and positive. So there's all these people that I've you know I've come to interact with. Um, you know I'm not trying to leave anyone off, but I could be here all day. So uh, please don't get offended. Um, and of course, my good buddy of mine, brother for another mother, uh, Jamie. Uh, you know we we used to do this kind of stuff uh, through Gameplug and uh, Novastream. You know Alistair as well. Touch base with him now and then. And uh, just, just rattling off shout outs now. So, you know, it's been something that I've been doing for a while as a, just a hobby. And I got to go to EB Games Expos and some events and, you know, getting game review codes and stuff like that. 
over the years and it was a lot of fun and just the 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 camaraderie and the, the banter between all these people and um, a lot of us are trying to focus more on the Aussie creator community now because there isn't really much of one that we know of or it's very small and you don't know many um, so that's something that we're trying to work on and I'm trying to make a positive push for it so this is all part of me um, trying to get something going every week and uh, we can all support each other as Aussie creators uh, particularly in the game space you don't really see a lot of it like we're all kind of getting over the American stuff it's all we see when you sign in I'm not the only one that's commented on this like I'm I'm kind of over hearing about Americans talking about everything so I'd like to get to know some more Aussies and um, band together that way anyway so yeah today before we get into my topics here we've got three topics I mentioned them at the top of the show but I went out today and uh, funny story I went to my local EB games picked up a couple of uh, I had no intention of picking up a couple of games today it really really didn't but uh, I thought I'll have a sticky beak see what's around and I don't know why but I just gravitated straight to the uh, discount bin or the old like 360 bin and I thought I'll just have a little poke around um, and uh, there, was one, there was this game it was right at the front it was like it was calling to me I've been looking for it for years or being I got off on eBay for years a complete copy of it and um, old mate I'm a, I'm a big Marvel Captain America fan of the movies at least and uh, I do really enjoy the character as well and I've always thought about getting the 360 game apparently it's decent like it's a, a lower tiered Arkham uh, ripoff kind of yeah you know, it's not overly good but it's the best of that era that Sega made they did it like a run of these Marvel games at the time and yeah so I picked up Captain America it's just sitting there in the front like right at the front as I um, walked over the bin I was like holy shit there it is, I've been looking for it forever, um, like it's complete, manual and everything, but the the thing is, this is the funny part right, there's a, there's a multi-tiered story to this, including the other one, so I walk up, um, well I'll just, I'll tell you about it, so yeah there's that, and then I picked up Doot Nukem Forever, I just had to, like, I missed Doot Nukem and I, th I want to give this another go, I, I did buy this at launch when it came out, like the case isn't the best, but it's complete with manual and uh it's, it was only 10 bucks pre-owned and captain america 18. so i was like yeah i'll give duke nukem another go i thoroughly enjoy duke nukem as a character i'm a big fan of the guy and i want him to come back because he stands for everything that um, you can't do today pretty much and I, I miss this kind of character just totally bombastic and macho and fully testosterone and it's kind of lacking today um whatever so yeah, do new from forever. Grab these two, walked up to the counter. Just gonna hang on to this receipt. <laughs> Let me put that back in here. So I walked up to the counter and uh, the guy starts scanning these in. I was having a good yarn with him before when I walked in and uh, you know made a couple jokes, built some rapport, and uh, went up and said, "Yeah, let's buy these two things." And he goes, "Oh, he scans in Captain America." He's actually. This one, uh, this one's been scanned, come up as, um, oh, what was the word he used? Uh, see if it's on the receipt. Anyway, there's, there's something on the system saying that he, it shouldn't be there. He goes, that, that game, actually, it shouldn't be there. It's marked in the system here, if, um, to terminate or something. Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's, he hasn't even run it through. So that, that's a good part. So yeah. Basically, yeah, he's like, that, that shouldn't be there. And I was like, why? And he goes, oh, well, if you look, look at the disc. I haven't actually tried to run this yet, but the disc is, it's pretty, you can't see it from here, but it's, it's in bad shape. Like, I, I would be lucky to see if that even runs, to be honest. I'm going to give it a go later on tonight. I'll hook up my 360 and try and get it to, to run. Fingers crossed, because I want to play this game. It's, I've, always, I've wanted to play this for years and I finally found a copy and uh, it might not run so he goes look I don't know what to do with it I said well me me being me you don't ask you don't get so I just looked him dead in the face I said well if you if you can't if it's not supposed to be there and it's defective and, and it shouldn't be in the system can you just give it to me like I was nice about it I didn't say it in that tone but I was like yeah oh, okay, you know, if you're not supposed to have it can, can I just walk out with it can you just give it to me and he's like oh, oh I don't know I don't that, I've never been asked that question. I was like, well, think about it. It wasn't supposed to be there. 
now you're gonna have to run this through and send it somewhere if it's or throw it in the bin or whatever and if you're just gonna do that if it doesn't work uh you're not selling it to me it's gonna be thrown out anyway just give it to me you know i'm, I'm buying something here anyway uh i'll take it off your hand and he's like oh i might be able to give you the disc i was like no no i want the whole thing mate like <laughs> give me the give me the case and the manual um he's like, oh, i can't sell them individually it's all no worries just give it to me then and he's like oh okay all right um I'll, I'll we've got a deal on for buying like two if you buy two you get 50 percent off one of the purchases and i was like man if you just want to run duke nukem through for 10 bucks and just give it to me and and don't give him the sale like whatever you want to do and he goes oh, i can't do that i have to run it through so instead of getting these because he couldn't give me captain america which was 18 bucks he had to run through Duke Nukem, which was 10 bucks. And like he goes, is there something else over in the bin that you wanted to make that I can run through two for? And uh, I said, no, I already looked through and there wasn't anything else that I wanted. And he goes, all right, well, I have to run through Duke Nukem at five bucks. <laughs> and um, and I'll just give you a Captain America. <laughs> so um, yeah, so basically instead of spending 28 bucks I walked out with a potentially defective game and uh, Duke Nukem Forever for five bucks. So that, that was good. That was a good one. I never thought, I, I haven't had an experience like that before in an EB games. So thanks mate. I'm not going to drop your names in case you might get in trouble, but uh, thank you very much for meeting me in the middle on that one. I'm going to give it a go later and if it doesn't work, no harm, no foul. I'm a happy guy either way. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's that story. I wanted to get out of the way straight up the top. Um, yeah, so we'll get straight into the, the first topic here. <sighs> Alright, so speaking of privilege and unnecessary spending, <laughs> um, my Nintendo Switch Lite story. So, a few of you already know this story. I've been on two podcasts this week already with the uh, Aussie Gamers Express and the Sin Spacey Show. Uh, so why did I buy another one? So let's, let's scale it back a bit. I actually bought an original Switch model when it came out. And I had a bunch, all the best games, like the main Nintendo uh, first party games on it. And I sold it all uh, a while back, uh, going through a bit of a tough period. Sold it all for about 600 bucks and um, didn't really regret it because I didn't really play it as much at that point. It's kind of over it. And you know, it was an easy, easy 600 bucks. So I went down to see my family over a uh, birthday period and my brother had one and I was getting that itch again. I'm like, oh God, it's been a while since I've seen a Switch and the Switch Lite has come out and it's kind of appealing and uh, all this kind of stuff. And we watching some Switch videos and had a couple of friends coming up that weekend and they're gonna bring their Switches up and I don't have one. And I was like, ah, oh, God damn. Yeah, I kind of fell into the point of how can I get one? And then he goes, oh look, Big W were doing them on sale for like 288 or whatever it was, and I was like, oh crap. Oh, and they do afterpay. It's like, oh god. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I twisted a few things, and I ended up uh, buying one right on afterpay. So oh, I wasn't really willing and prepared to put up the front costs for it. And I, if I did, I wouldn't have got one. But the fact that I can just pay it off and walk out the door, that's priceless. So I picked up the gray model gray model switch light here i love this thing i think this is far superior of the design than the actual switch itself i don't care for the joy cons i just don't give a shit um the original model is to me there's too much flex in it like when you can when you're holding it for long periods of time you can or if you're getting into the game because of how the joy cons are connected on the sides here you can get a bit of flex at least i noticed that and it, it's it's not light either uh, this is light, hence the name, but the original switch over time, like I used to rest it like this, so my pinky's resting the, the, the weight uh, while I'm holding it. And over time, it gets a bit heavy, right? And you're playing for an hour or so, and it's like, all right, I can't can't play it anymore. I've, I've got to put it down because it's stretch my fingers and whatnot. This one, none of that. I don't have any problems with that. It, it fits well on my hand here. Uh, it, I, you know, I could probably do with a bigger screen, but it's, even that's not such a big, I, big deal or anything like that. It's a smaller screen, but everything pops better. Like all the pixels are denser on this screen because it's the same resolution, but smaller screen. So everything looks sharper. I do really like this. Uh, I originally was going to pick up a blue one 
and at the last minute I opted for the grey one. I think I made the right choice because it makes whatever is showing on the screen pop more. And there's no colour. <clears throat> Excuse me. That no, coffee, what the hell. Uh, there's no colour around the screen to distract from any uh, colours on screen. That's at least just how I see it. And that feels really well in hand. The D-pad is a game changer. I, I scoffed at it once. I was like, oh, okay, everybody's gone nuts about the D-pad. How, how much could that improve this experience? Really? Really? And now that I've had it and I have Nintendo Online again and I've got the NES and the SNES online apps on here, um, playing the old games, yeah, it does make a difference. I, I will not play the other one. I, I'm not, I have no intention of buying another one, the big model. Uh, I My original Switch, I barely played it docked. So I, I never really played it on my TV. It was always like this. So to me, this is how I'm going to be doing my Switch games going forward. I have no regrets. I do kind of miss the rumble on it. There's no HD rumble in this thing or rumble at all of any kind. I do miss that. But that's the only thing. That's the only kind of negative I have for it. Otherwise, I, I highly recommend if you were on the fence and you don't have a Switch and you don't want to spend a lot or you know spend all the money on the big one, you can buy these relatively, relatively cheaper on, on the margin between the two. And uh, if, if you were going to spend the money on a normal Switch, but you spend on this one, you'll probably have enough left to buy a game with it as well. So for this, I, I picked up Smash Bros. I just had to because I honestly don't think there's going to be another Smash Bros. game ever. I just don't think so. And if it is, it's not going to be the same. So I picked up Smash Bros. Ultimate, unlocked all the characters again, and I'm ready to go get the DLC packs for the next characters and um, just have them all in there part of gaming history that game I thoroughly enjoyed it. it's a fun game too it's good just to sit there and grind out a couple of things uh, so yeah that's why I picked one up and what I have on it and what I've been playing on it um, what I hope to get in future is maybe Sonic Team Racing I think that might just be I, I had Mario Kart before and I would like to have some kind of kart game on this thing and I've been interested in picking up Sonic Team Racing but um, I'm not sure it sounds like it's a bit gimped People say it plays just the same, but you're missing some cutscenes or something, which I don't understand. There's, there's bigger games on the Switch that have all their stuff, except that one. I, I don't quite understand how that happened, but um, I can't see myself playing Sonic Team Racing on my big Xbox One X, you know. Anyway, so here we go. Uh, it's mainly just going to be my Nintendo IP console, like Astral Chain. Astral Chain, I'm pretty keen on picking up as well, Pokemon. The general usual stuff like whatever I don't really feel like playing on my Xbox on the big screen probably gonna go here like ukulele probably pick that up again for this and the the new ukulele game that, that's coming out probably do that on there as well uh, in place of tropical freeze uh, Donkey Kong Country tropical freeze uh, kind of bit over Donkey Kong so I think I might give ukulele a go give some other mascots time to shine so yeah, uh, do you guys have a Switch? Let me know what games you recommend that I pick up for the Switch since I'm back new to it. Let me know any new games coming out that I should have on my radar. Just put them in the comments down below. And have, are you thinking of getting a Switch at all? Like if you don't have one, does the new Switch light? Does it intrigue you enough? Coming from me who have, I've experienced both and I compared this one to my brother's big one and uh, the screen's better and all that kind of stuff. You, you missed some real screen size, that's about it. And everything else that I just mentioned. Uh, just let me know in the comments below. And we'll start a conversation. Anyway, so that's, that's enough of that topic. We'll move on to the next one. Okie dokie. So this one, you're going to have to bear with me a moment. In post, I'm going to put up some photos over the top of this topic as well. Because there's a lot to explain here. My god. Okay, so Zack Snyder, he's just come online on the Vero app, which he loves and uses every time he posts something. Doesn't really have a presence on any, any other social media, that's it. So today, or yesterday, depending on where you are, or when you're watching this, it doesn't really matter. But he posted up some storyboards like he's been doing. But this one, he's revealed that General Swanwick, we know him from Man of Steel and Batman vs Superman. He's a hard ass, he's an awesome character, military man. It turns out in Justice League, as you can see here on this storyboard, he goes, well, it's a reveal that he's Martian Manhunter, right? <laughs> so I'm just going to put that out there right now. 
that's been a theory going on for years that he could be uh, like John Johns or taking on another persona as General Swanwick, but it's actually John Johns, Master Manhunter. He's a shape shifting alien from Mars, and he's you know his power set like Superman basically, um, intangibility and all that kind of stuff. Um, shape shifting, blah blah blah, you name it. Um, so there's this scene where we've seen behind the scenes photos leaked from various people like cinematographers and Zack Snyder himself of uh, Martha and Lois sitting down in Lois's apartment having a coffee talking assumedly about Clark's death right and how Lois is dealing with that but this storyboard here shows that in that very same scene that we've seen uh, been leaked a while back we thought it was Martha Martha right but it turns out that's General Swanwick who's shape-shifted into Martha who then reveals himself to be Martian Manhunter <laughs> you know so that just like blew my mind when I saw that I'm like holy shit oh my god like I know that it's been said for ages that his intention for Justice League was to blow the DC Universe open as far as on film goes like Justice League was going to be the thing that would like spawn everything else right and uh so we've you know we would have had a flash cyborg you know now we've got martian manhunter that could have come into play you know batman of course it was supposed to be a death run for batman he was going to sacrifice himself that's what ben affleck signed on for uh as a you know another reason for the team to kind of push forward and then you know shazam all that kind of stuff so um yeah so we see them both in their apartment and as martha leaves he then turns around at the camera shifts into his base form his natural martian manhunter form and then back in the general swanwick again and walks off in the scene instead of all that that, that as a fan that's just epic like it's just such a good moment that they left out uh, but instead we've got joss whedon who took over uh making this film when Zack snyder left or warner brothers at the time management lost confidence in the cut that Zack snyder had brought joss whedon in to basically recut and reshoot the entire film over 50 percent or at least close to that uh so instead we get that really shitty scene where you've got martha and lois uh talking in in the daily planet about just idle crap and some random guy coming in to ask lois about a lead or something and then you've got this tv going with this this news anchor trying to you know sound funny as he's delivering his lines and some old lady screaming and swearing down the phone uh, phone screaming down the microphone you know, and then TV turns off and then we get this weird banter or conversation between Martha and Lois and Martha tricking or slipping over her words saying Lois is thirsty or it, or something like that like it's just it was very awkward it was a weird scene I, I remember in the theater going this isn't this isn't a Zack Snyder scene like it's just and the the cards started coming down that i could see like oh god that's not Zack snyder that's not you know this is a reshoot scene rah, rah. and this just happened to be one of them so I, I just don't get it like we had something epic that we could have seen on screen and you know officially introducing master manhunter onto the scene uh but look th this is a long line of a long line of incidents that have been occurring over the last year or so about this film We've got a lot of the actors now coming out supporting the release of Snyder Cut movement. Uh, they want to see the film. Some of them, like Jason Momoa, have been shown it by Zack Snyder. Like he's seen it. It exists. Zack Snyder's had a fan event where he's admitted to everybody there that yeah, a cut exists. He has one, multiple cuts even. Uh, so it is a thing. Uh, and so that's why he keeps releasing this stuff that he's got. Like I, I don't understand how he gets away with it. There's obviously some legality or loophole or something he's got I, I can't i don't have my head on it but so, so for some reason he's allowed to release photos on sets and uh storyboards and screenshots and all this kind of stuff on his very without warner brothers giving a cease and desist so who knows what's going on um but there's more and more rumbles that this is going to happen uh i'm going to post a, another image on screen hopefully in time for this uh this next point that i'm going to mention where he he responded to someone on Vero about uh, how so one a fan asking like how we how can we get this to happen how can we get this to to be shown 
how can we see it because uh, he keeps releasing stuff and he leaves a uh, reply to this guy saying what you're doing uh, is what you need to do or no sorry what you what you're seeing um, sorry what you're doing is is working or something like that whatever it is it's on screen I don't have the exact quote open in front of me so basically he's given in his support of like just keep doing what you're doing and people are talking behind the scenes people high up like there's no way they can't know about it uh, fans have done like mail outs to the studio like sending them uh, fan mail or letters of support or voicemails to the reception girl uh, plane banners being flown over conventions you know with the banner of release of Snyder Cut posters and um, like bus signs and stuff of release of Snyder Cut and now recently at New York Comic Con I think it's called people the fans have put together for Times Square some billboards some of those video boards in Times Square in New York City I've released a Snyder Cut with some quotes from Zack Snyder and like you know it's three and a half hours long and all this kind of stuff I'll, I'll put some footage on screen or some photos at least so you know what I'm talking about <coughs> excuse me I've been talking a while now and so the, the, the fan base is just not obsessed but they're fervent for this like they want it I want it so bad you know I, but there's nothing I can do about it uh, all I can do is talk about it you know, I wish I'd been talking about it more just to, you know, put my kind of spin on it or, you know, give my voice to it. But there's enough people doing it already. But, oh, just, it's exciting. Just totally cut out some coughing then. Having a coffee while I'm going to be talking is probably the worst idea. <clears throat> anyway, so, yeah, there's a lot moving behind the scenes. I think we're going to get it in some form or another. Who knows? There's, as I said, there's new management again at Warner Brothers now and they seem to be really taking these by the horns like Joker's come out with all the, the controversy of Joker and uh, they, they even came out saying no we're not going to do any more showings for press people because all they're doing is giving negative press like it, they have faith in the film but these you got these woke journalists that are taking issue with it like it's going to be you know promoting incel violence and gun shootings and all this kind of stuff it's a joker film man like there's worse films that have happened that have come out before this even about mass shooters you know but this this movie is the story of joker he's a villain for god's sakes you know like what do you expect not everything is a marvel film not everything is uh wrapped in cotton buds for you so they've come out and they're like no nah, no more showing everybody's going to see it at the same time now deal with it that's ballsy man for a studio to do that granted they've had a lot of positive uh, buzz from the actual critics that matter and you know everything that's coming online about it people coming out saying it's a great film shut up i can't wait to see it i'm gonna hopefully i can get to tomorrow or this week at some point if i can get out so this new management i hope that they're kind of we needed this back when zack snyder was on <laughs> if they're gonna back their teams like the new bird of prey film with harley quinn and all that i'm not even saying the full name but Birds of Prey, Harley Quinn, Emancipation, blah, blah, blah. It's like a 10-letter name. A 10-letter name. 10-worded title. Um, they, they seem to be really behind it. It's all over their social media. Like, all the banners and icons have changed with Harley Quinn on it. They're backing this film real hard. You know, I I'm, I don't have enough faith in the film. I'll go see it, uh, just as a DC fan. But I, there's, I, there's a lot of issues I'll have with that film at the moment. I'll with, with reserve, reserve judgment until I see it. But, look, I, I just don't like what I'm seeing so far. I don't want to get into it uh, too much at the moment. But we, we needed this. We needed this ballsy management that actually backed their movies back when Zack Snyder was on. And we could have probably got Justice League, Flash by now, Green Lantern Corps by now, Cyborg by now. That was all on the pipeline. That was all on the slate. Like this 2020, we where apparently the original slate 2020 would have been Cyborg and Green Lantern or flash in green lantern or something like that in one year oh no we already would have had a flash film then there's no man of steel 2 yet because of all these shake-ups and changes and everything so i've lost faith a lot in warner brothers in the dc films ever since the end of batman vs superman and the management at the time just crumpled into believing what the like work critics or the 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 critics that couldn't handle it how dark it was even though it's not really that dark to be honest it's darker films but because they didn't fit the the marvel formula it was just a real harsh criticism so you know they just reacted and adjusted and tried to fit that mold and i just lost interest so i'm hoping this new management can kind of win me back 
And so far, they're kind of showing hints that they will. If they do release the Snyder Cut Blu-ray, I'm hoping. If they put it out and there's like a, let's make up some ground here to the fans and uh, appreciate what came before, then you, you'll have me on board. Anyway, I, I just really wanted to talk about that because that's huge. Uh, that's that's another massive reveal among others that have been revealed over time. So um, now that I'm doing this, I'll give myself a platform to give myself some talking time about it when things happen rather than just being the one that's listening. Anyway, I'm going to clean my throat a bit more <coughs> and have some more coffee and try and make it through this next topic. <laughs> <clears throat> Alrighty, I probably should have brought some water in with me. Some water and lemon. I'm just getting over a cold that I had this week. So, yeah, throat's a bit crap. So the next topic, Transformers. My goodness. I I am literally hooked. <laughs> I haven't bought Transformers for years in life. Years. And then one day, about a year or two ago, my brother goes, tags me on Facebook about this new Transformers toy line that's coming out. And I was like, all right, let's have a look. And I was instantly blown away. Instantly blown away. And since then, I've been hooked. I went all in on it. I've, I've even had to make a OneNote document ticking off the ones that I've got and the list of the ones that I don't have yet. <laughs> it's gotten that bad. I, you know, the ones that I'm hoping that they release in future sets. Like, I've, there's a lot of the toy lines over the years that, for Transformers. I'm like, oh, they look like shit. They're just crap. You know, they look really bad. But this this one in particular looks really good. Something about the aesthetics of it. It's amazing. It's true to the Generation 1 stuff. But it's with, like, a future, like, modern take on all the on the characters. What really hooked me was the Cybertronian modes. That I've got some already. I, you know, I might try and splash some on screen so you know what the hell I'm talking about. I loved it. Transformers Siege, War for Cybertron. Uh, so much so that I've even got an Omega Supreme on the way. Hopefully it arrives soon. I have had to put the brakes on it. I was getting way over, way over blown, way over ambitious with this. Where I was going to get like as much as I could. I was going to buy every, everything from this line. I eventually just had to start rain, ringing myself in. I was getting too excited. I'd be like, no, just, just like get some. <laughs> don't get all of them because that's a, that's a bad thing. Uh, I don't need that. Um, so now New York Comic Con again. All this is happening at once. They've just revealed the next chapter: War for Cybertron trilogy, Earthrise. So what initially had me hooked was the Cybertron aspect of it. I thought it was going to be all, there's like three chapters to this apparently, of this War for, War for Cybertron trilogy story. So we've had like a year or two, uh, five waves of Cybertronian modes or, you know, pseudo Cybertronian modes. And it's all about how before they get to Earth. And that's what I was really excited for. I was jumping on on that story aspect of it. With the Netflix series coming out, I thought it would just be all about that, all on Cybertron. Anyway, so they reveal these new ones, uh, basically saying, yep, yeah, it's Earthrise. We're on Earth now. So the first chapter of Siege is now finished, and now this is telling the story about what happens when they get to Earth and they get new alt modes. You know, Optimus Prime, he takes, you know, the big flat face truck with a trailer and all that, more Earth vehicles. F11 fighter jet, I think it's called for Starscream. All that kind of stuff. So it was a bit unexpected for me. I thought it was going to be more Cybertron and more characters like that. Uh, I kind of, it's a bit boring now. I'm going to be buying some, don't get me wrong. Optimus Prime looks sick. Wheeljack, I want a Wheeljack so bad. He's, he's been revealed. I'll be buying him. Uh, so definitely there's a new Optimus Prime with a trailer. I don't have an Optimus Prime of a G1 version with a trailer. Never in my life had one. My brother did. Uh, I never got one, so now I'm going to be buying one for myself. The only one that came even close was the Transformers Armada version that I've got. It's a big ass thing. Um, Will Jack, just, I love, I've always loved his design. It's so unique. And the, the character is just funny. Love him. Uh, so the, this toy looks fantastic as well. Starscream, I'm not the only one that's a bit disappointed in this because they've, they did a really badass one. His Tetrajet mode and Cybertron. I've got that. I've got Thundercracker on the way, and I'm going to be hunting down a Skywarp so I can get those three Seekers uh, in their Tetrajet modes while they're on Cybertron. See, in, in my logic, 
Decepticons wouldn't give a shit, right? If they came to Earth and they're like, oh, we need to get alt mode so we can stay hidden. That's an Autobot mentality, right? I would imagine Decepticons coming to Earth not giving a fuck, <laughs> you know? They're just like, fuck you guys, we're going to destroy shit. We're going to take out the Autobots and any humans in the way will take them out too. They're not going to bother with alt modes, you know? Anyway, so we've got a new Starscream in the F1, uh, F11 fighter jet. I'm pretty sure it's F11 fighter jet. It looks awesome, don't get me wrong. I won't be buying it though. So they're doing me a favor. It's just one less I need to buy. Um, unless they bring out the cone heads. Uh, there's like multiple variants of the Starscream character model, different car characters, different colors. Some of them have like big cone heads instead of being integrated into their chest. So if they do the cone heads in this mold, I'll be buying three of those. Then I'll have my six Seekers, rather than buying like every color of the rainbow like some people do. Hoist and Grapple, eh, I never really, I don't have much of an affinity for them. I do remember them in the show, but none of them were like, oh, I really like those characters, so that's two less that I need to buy. Uh, next minute I buy Grapple, who knows, I don't know. They look awesome, don't get me wrong, like I'm tempted as, but raining it in i'm trying to just just you know don't go overblown save some money uh cliff jumper awesome like he's a pretty badass little dude always willing for a fight <laughs> uh, i'm surprised they didn't release bumblebee yet uh maybe they're saving him for the next chapter or next wave who knows but definitely if we're getting a cliff jumper it's easily going to be made into a bumblebee astro train was shown there as well he's the last of the siege line so i've got him pre-ordered as well can't wait for that guy. He looks like an absolute badass figure. The best Astro Train uh, that we've ever had. All the other ones have been pretty dodgy. So they finally nailed it on this one. So I'm pretty damn excited for that. Looking forward to more reveals. Like, that's it at the moment as far as the new ones. Optimus Prime, Little Jack. There's a whole bunch of little micro masters and micro masters. Like I'm watching, watching way too much American TV. Micro Masters. Uh, there's Ironworks. He's like a parts form. Well, not a parts form, but... He turns into a iron factory thing, <laughs> a little mini base for the the micro masters to run around on. Not gonna buy him at all. Yeah, Starscream, Hoist, Grapple, Cliff Jumper, the, the new reveals at the moment. Uh, yeah, as I said, probably only gonna buy two of those, Optimus and Willjack. So they're coming out 2020 at some point. They're out for pre-order now, some places, but uh, I'm gonna wait for some of these Aussie local Aussie retailers that I've been buying through. When they get their orders up, I'll be using them again. That's where I got all my other ones. Uh, so yeah, I'm very excited man. like I've I've never really been this hyped and buying a toy line before like I have collectibles like, I've got a massive Gears of War shelf up there but even that's tempered you know that's I've, that's only like the game cases and three or four collector's editions that's about it over the last 10 years of Gears or whatever it is 13 years uh, you know so and just random stuff like even my Power Ranger shelf and my Dragmo shelf is not this insane. I'm going nuts <laughs> with this Transformers line. I, it's totally unexpected, but I, I enjoy it. I'm getting a lot of enjoyment out of it. No regrets. It's always exciting getting a new one or seeing new stuff and they're actually quality and they look good. If they look like shit, I probably wouldn't be getting them, right? But the aesthetic overall, I've got... It's just hooked. I've, I've got it. Like, you know, they've got me. I'm hooked in it. Oh, I'm seeing it all the way to the end. And, you know, if, if if by the end of this trilogy, there's some characters that they haven't redone, I will go back and buy some of the other ones, <laughs> you know, to fill up those gaps. That's how obsessed I am right now. Uh, anyway, uh, so, yeah, if you want to know more about that or what I've got, I've got a list I can share with you. Um, I don't know, do you collect Transformers? Do you have anything that you collect or have a pride in a little collection for? I know there's a lot of people out there that, pretty damn obsessed to the point of like even i would be like whoa that's a bit much mate but whatever whatever makes you happy I, i'm not going to be like that guy i'm pretty reserved this is just a bit over the top for me at the moment but i'm enjoying it so let me know what you guys do if you collect anything i'm curious to know um so before we wrap up here <clears throat> there's a little section at the end of these that i want to add in I made a video about the hashtag Posy Peeps. It's dumb, I know it is. It sounds dumb, but there's a good thing behind it. It's to showcase positivity in the community where possible, right? So the idea is people that leave 
that I noticed that leave good comments. Like, <clears throat> I, I, I'm not trying to get people to go out of the way to leave positive comments, but the people that I see on my social media or on, on my YouTube comments, uh, I'll, I'll be screenshotting those, and every now and then I'll, you know, I'll add them to the end of these chunk casts as a little segment, just to highlight some things. And um, you know, I might just play some music over the top of them and on a slideshow and just you know, showcase some positive stuff. So what I'm looking for is people to just think before you comment. I know it's difficult. I've, I'm guilty as well of just shotgunning a comment out and then I regret it later. But what I'm looking for is if there's something really positive that you want to say or that you want to share, yeah, not don't force it. But if, if there's something that either I've done on my video or I've posted on social media and you know you feel like saying a nice g'day or saying something nice about something, um, there's a high chance that I'll grab that, I'll remember it, and I'll throw it on the end of my next um, chunk cast as like a little collage or something like that, just to kind of give that a little incentive for people to be kind, because the world sucks, man. It's it's hard, a lot of shit people out there, and if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to use this for me, uh, I've kind of gr I've grown up a bit, I guess. <clears throat> I don't really, I don't shoot off as much as I used to. I don't, I don't trigger as much as I used to I'm just over it and I'm kind of taking a, another spin on it so if there's something nice that you want to say like your mum hopefully would say or taught you growing up that if you have nothing nice to say don't say it at all kind of thing and that's kind of what I'm trying to put here like if you do if you're nice and I see you're nice in, in the community in my socials and my comments then I'll be more inclined to uh, share it and that'll be like another shout out for you as well so I want to foster that if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to build this up as like a little community for people to interact with and with others, that's kind of what I want. Um, so I'm going to, I didn't get a chance to share some recent ones on my last Posi Peace video. So I'm, I'm going to put them up here while I'm yabbering on about it, just to give you an example of, of uh, what I mean. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, so I don't know, if, as well as this video, if, if you've gotten to the end of this video, and uh, you leave some comments like some positive stuff about you know what I've just asked or what I'm talking about. If you're into any of this kind of stuff that I'm talking about here uh, in this video, leave a comment. And um, you know if, if I see it as a positive, I'll depending on what it is in the context and you know behind it, I'll be mindful to share it. I can't guarantee to share everything, but I'll share as much as I can on the next one. Uh, yeah, so that's I think it's my my last topic point on here. So yeah, yeah, I guess mm, by now, if you haven't already, you can find me on my socials, Uncle Chant everywhere, or UncleChant.com. I think it says Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, yeah, Mixer, just Uncle Chant. If you're on a platform, I'm not on all of them, but if you're on it, just search for Uncle Chant, you'll probably find me. Otherwise, UncleChant.com. I'll try and update that more regularly, but it's got my links on there. Um, so that's just where you can find me after this, but look, I've enjoyed this one. It's a bit rusty. It's been a while since I've done one of these. I was on two other podcasts this week. I think I might have mentioned it at the top of the show. I can't remember. But yeah, the Aussie Gamers Express podcast with Snooze and Greggio earlier on the week. And um, this Saturday, a, couple, a, day or, a day ago, I think it was now, this Saturday, I was on the Sin Spacey show. So that was a lot of fun. So it's two. So I'm sitting here on a Sunday, a lazy Sunday, going, oh, what am I going to do? And so I think I might just give myself a, um, a trial run of this and see how I go, see how this new room, well this new corner at least, <laughs> this new corner of this room with this makeshift desk and these little bits and pieces to see if this actually works. Um, yeah, I think it does and it's good because at the end of it when I'm done I can just push it to the side and I've got my whole room available to me again. This is going to be good. Uh, I think I've got a working space here and I've made it as simple as possible with this setup that I've got just to nut these out, you know, one once a week at whatever random time. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to give a shit about being consistent with days, but I'm thinking Wednesdays, or maybe at the end of my week, um, weekend. I don't know. It just depends. I think Wednesdays would be the day where I don't really have much on my schedule that I like to keep for myself, so I can nut one out in a couple of hours on a Wednesday afternoon. See how we go. It's a work in progress. It's only the first one coming back, and yeah. I had a good time. Hopefully you did as well. I'm going to start wrapping it up now. I'm um, just going to say in the meantime, between the next one, what is in general during your normal days? Just be kind to each other. Be nice. 
you know, be better people. Don't be so easy to shotgun anger and frustration. I know it's difficult. I'm guilty of it, you know, multiple times a week. <laughs> but trying to be better about it. So I'm going to try and leave you with that after every one of these. Of just, you know, be kind to each other, enjoy yourselves, and come back here next time. And we'll do this again. Toodaloos, I'll see you online some point. Bye. Like, comment, subscribe.